Hi, this is Charles Matthews. I'm the architect here with Grizzly Bear Architecture and Design. Today we are looking at how to construct a building. So, in looking at how we construct a building, um, we'll get into um, the, the various details eventually, but I want to first look at uh, the concurrent nature of construction. Now, whenever you're building something, uh, the various types of things that can happen uh, need to be installed, in some cases sequentially, but there are things that can happen at roughly the same time by different people uh, in order to eventually get their place into the whole building construction. Uh, so some things have to happen in sequence. You have to prepare the land, and then you have to start building. Uh, other things, though, that can happen concurrently uh, are and include that while the land is being prepared, items can be made off the site and shipped in. Now, depending on how skilled the general contractor is, uh, this kind of thing can be happening uh, to where uh, fabrication is occurring while the, uh, the foundation is being laid. So as we're looking at the process of how to construct a building, it's important to keep in mind this uh, idea of the concurrent nature of construction. Different things can happen at the same time, but not necessarily at the same place. The overall steps that are involved in constructing a building is, first of all, you have to have the site prepared. Uh, you have to have the foundation created, the structure installed on the foundation. Uh, the plumbing, which had been originally uh, put in by way of all the pipes that come in contact with the ground uh, in phase one, uh, this phase four of plumbing would require that uh, all of the various types of pipes that are going in and through the structure would be put into place. Uh, your electrical would be installed, meaning the wiring, the panels, etc. The mechanical systems, such as your heating and cooling. The, uh, then after these kinds of things with the exterior sheathing uh, of the building, meaning the plywood or whatever it is that is going to be used for the outside of the structure, uh, you'd have the exterior finish and fenestration by way of windows and you'd also be adding insulation in. After these things are done, uh, you'd have the interior finishing, like what are the walls going to be on the inside? What do they have in them and on them? And what type of furnishings will be in the building? And uh, after these things are going, you can include the landscaping, meaning what trees and plants, what foliage will be in the area. And finally, your building being commissioned or basically it's starting up. The, uh, the whole process of using the building has begun. So those are the steps that are involved. Uh, so we'll get into a little bit more detail now. Uh, site preparation and excavation, including grading and rough plumbing, would include things like, do you, does the land need to be cut away or does it need to be filled in in order to accomplish whatever uh, needs there are for the, the building? Uh, does the soil need to be compacted more and is it level for the uses that it's going to need? Uh, is it sloping properly? Uh, are there barriers in place, like barriers to prevent weeds from growing if you're going to have a, uh, not a paved sidewalk, but when a decomposed granite. Uh, plumbing and other underground services, are those in place? So these are things that are required related to site preparation. Regarding the foundation, you'd have to have formwork in place uh, and still reinforcing, usually for most construction. Uh, after the formwork and the steel reinforcing is in place, uh, you, a person would be pouring a foundation, usually in concrete. Now this is in a lot of standard construction, although there are, based on your circumstances, there are differences that could happen. Historical, uh, or from a historical viewpoint, 
the these three materials stone wood concrete block each one of these have been used for foundations in the past and so wood uh, wood can be used uh, its bearing capacity is not as much as stone or a concrete block and you have to make sure that it is well below uh, any area where oxygen could easily get to it uh, so wood is not typically a, a good idea for use as a foundation structure uh, two types of structure that are used are wood and steel uh, wood primarily because of its flexibility and steel because of its strength although wood is highly strong uh, wood doesn't have the same durability as steel in uh, if I could add one, it would be concrete. Concrete is an excellent structure for uh, use in, design, in the design of buildings. Plumbing. Uh, your plumbing at times, uh, especially, it would need to run through the framing of the walls. And you would also, during this part, you would need to be, be putting items in place that would be difficult, if not impossible, to add after the finishes have been applied. Think of built-in bathtubs. Uh, those are extremely hard to, uh, to get into a house after the house has already been built. Electrical components would include main services, circuit box, conduit, wiring, junction boxes, boxes sorry, and eventually outlets and faceplates. Mechanical systems such as air handling units including heat pumps, ventilation ducting registers and grills uh, exterior finish and fenestration would include plywood sheathing uh, as a, for the exterior uh, a vapor barrier so that you won't have water coming into the building from the outside air uh, stucco as an example of an exterior finish brick veneer and it, these these various Elements can be used as a veneer, uh, especially in the the idea of brick. And can, brick can also be used as a structural material, depending on your location. Uh, that may make more sense than other locations. Uh, as an example, in the southern part of the country, a brick veneer, uh, I'm sorry, a, a brick structure uh, can be used pretty well because you don't have to consider the seismic forces. Uh, but in LA County, a brick structure, uh, and again, we're not talking about a brick veneer here, uh, it would be harder to use brick uh, because of the need to design the steel reinforcing. So, uh, exterior finish would include fenestration as well, including windows and doors and uh, other possible cladding devices such as wood. Uh, insulation would be added next uh, and, and I say next it's loosely some of these things like I mentioned before can happen concurrently so uh, purposes of insulation would include thermal properties like are you trying to resist heat from coming in or heat from getting out and uh, sound isolation are you trying to prevent sound from going from one room into another room. Uh, various types of applied uh, insulation are out there. Uh, there can be the, the familiar uh, pink uh, rolls or bats of insulation. Those can, would occur within walls. Uh, insulation that is blown in, meaning uh, basically they, they stick a, a big flexible pipe into the ceiling cavity and just totally load it up with various types of uh, insulating materials that can be blown in. And finally, uh, there are types of insulation that are rigid, such as foam, uh, used on the exterior of buildings most frequently. Next, you get into interior finish and furnishings, and that's any host of types of items such as drywall, plywood, paneling, paint, wallpaper, light fixtures, molding, paintings, tapestry, statuary, 
technology for media, including home theater, etc. All these things uh, are different types of things, and it's going to be based on the uh, the client's needs and the architect's choices based on those needs. Landscaping. Landscaping would include ground cover, uh, meaning for massive amounts of areas of ground in order to help minimize erosion processes, you would include something called ground cover. Uh, trees, which are basically the vertical elements. Do you want your trees to be trees that produce fruit uh, and give something back to you? Or do you want them to only have the idea of looking nice? And so those are decisions that the individual client would need to make. But like I said, this is the process of how things are done. Uh, various accents like flowers with the color of the flowers could be used as accents. Are, is your landscaping going to be used as a complement to the architecture or uh, as, a, uh, as an analogous relationship uh, that I mentioned in another video? But anyhow, is your landscaping something that complements the architecture or not? And food use. Uh, do you want your land to be able to produce food or is it only meant to have a certain look? Uh, I think that it's certainly possible to go either way. Uh, in some cases food use may be more helpful. Uh, in other areas it may be really detrimental. Uh, and by detrimental by way of the various types of things that you also would have to consider there. And finally, we are looking at building commissioning, meaning uh, if the building has been constructed according to plans by way of uh, their being approved, uh, are, is the building then activated, uh, all the various systems and tested and are they being monitored to ensure that they're working properly? So these are the various things that you have to consider uh, in the process of how to construct a building. And so again, these are big picture things and there are other smaller things that you would need to consider as well. Uh, but this is an overview of the basic process. Hi, this is Charles Matthews. Just wanted to say thanks for watching the video. If you have any thoughts or comments, feel free to leave those below. Visit our website at grizzlybeararchitecture.com. This video is one in a series of videos that address various issues surrounding architecture and our practice of architecture and grizzly bear architecture. And uh, if you have any thoughts or comments, I'd really appreciate those. Thanks.